Okay, um, talking about CTO, uh, ELEC CTOs and um, how to treat them. And again, uh, when it comes to CTO treatment, location and uh, extent uh, determ determines the approach and the uh, vascular exercise like we saw now the, uh, that uh, PK was uh, struggling with. So if um, a patient has a bilateral, um, you know, a common femoral uh, occlusion, then you can consider brachial axis uh, trying to cross them and sometimes, uh, you know, uh, bilateral uh, femoral axis as well. If you have an um, occluded bilateral occlusion of the external iliac arteries, then I would say uh, try uh, brachial axis or, uh, or you can consider also SFA or profounder axis um, as in addition to that just to help you to work from both sides. Uh, if you have a, you know, ipsilateral uh, occlusion, let's say in the external iliac, then contralateral axis would be a way to go. For uh, occluded common iliac all the way extending into the external iliac down to the uh, common femoral artery, then brachial axis and possibly proximal SFA profounder axis would be helpful. So uh, for the, uh, if, if lesion kind of located in the middle where the internal iliac artery takeoff is, then you can consider contralateral and ipsilateral axes. In terms of tips and tricks and caution, of course, a uh, very important thing is uh, to have a proper size of the sheath. I usually t uh, use a seven French sheath. Um, if, in case if something happened, you have to make sure that your uh, sheath can accommodate all the devices that you want to use in order to bail yourself out from all kind of complications. Uh, you have to have a proper uh, catheter support. You can use a vertebral five French through the seven French sheath or all three five support, support catheters. When it comes to wires, I usually pick uh, my first wire, depends on what I see and what characteristics of the lesions. Uh, uh, there, if it's um, if you think that seclusion is um, not calcified and probably fresh, you can try to cross it with um, 018 hydrophilic wires, such as uh, V18 control, something of that uh, family. Uh, if it's a calcified lesion and probably old, then I would start with a hydrophobic uh, heavy tip load CTO wire, such as, um, for example, a start of 30 gram tip uh, 018 wire. I try never to oversedate the patient, and I would not recommend oversedating the patient, because when patient starts experiencing pain during procedures, especially during a balloon angioplasty, it's a warning sign for you, and uh, that the vessel is about to rupture. Uh, so you have to really pay attention whether patient does or doesn't have um, pain during um, uh, balloon angioplasty or stent placement. Uh, you have to have a covered stance actually in the room rather than somewhere else. If something bad happens, you have to seal perforation immediately rather than sending the nurse uh, running around uh, the lab looking for covered stance. So I'll show you a couple of uh, cases here. Uh, this is the first case I actually did it a couple of weeks ago, a uh, 59-year-old male uh, who presented to one of my cardiology um, referring cardiologist offices uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, he is, uh, uh, you know, his niece is working in that office as a secretary, saying that he just had an angiogram done in outside hospital. Was told that um, uh, come back for intervention in a month, uh, which was kind of a red flag right there. I was like, something is wrong with that story. And then he, because he uh, was planning to go somewhere in vacation, he couldn't walk at all. He, um, the referring cardiologist asked me to do him next day when my uh, schedule was already full. So I, this is the picture I got at 8 p.m. Uh, <laughs> now I understand why he was told uh, why the intervention was not uh, done right away. And he was told to come uh, uh, rather later, some other day. So he's got totally occluded. Uh, external iliac artery and then a very long uh, total occlusion of the SFA. So uh, you see the occlusion right here. Uh, you see that uh, internal iliac is patent. Then you see reconstitution and then kind of a gap and then you see the profonda here. So um, uh, the way I approach it, I wire the internal iliac then advance the sheath up and around. Use vertebral catheter just to get 
to the uh, uh, osteum of the uh, internal iliac, redirected the tip, and then crossed it with the CTO wire. It was a stato 30 gram tip. And then it's kind of become uh, relatively easy. You balloon it, you stand it, good result. Then um, uh, went after uh, SFA. You see uh, uh, this is where the actual SFA was. So crossed it uh, all the way down, balloon it, stented it. It uh, turns out uh, as a good result. So he was happy and uh, left the lab. And now I think he's traveling somewhere. So this is a second case, 62-year-old uh, old, old man, uh, smoker, uh, status post coronary bypass, uh, presents with uh, rest pain in the left leg and uh, non-healing left foot ulcer. Uh, as you can see, he has a blunt occlusion of the uh, uh, left uh, common iliac artery right here. And um, um, it reconstitutes actually uh, like at the uh, border of the external iliac artery and common femoral artery down here. So not much room for the sheath going from below. That's why um, I punctured the, with the micropuncture uh, the, uh, the profonda here, going up, uh, put the microcatheter down, and uh, then uh, took a V18 control wire. You see that it's going up, advancing it up, looking for the, for the possible channel. Um, it's going to be there. So I think one of the uh, ways when you don't have access, uh, and I, I decided to go from below rather than from above because of the, this uh, steep uh, uh, kind of angle of the uh, uh, iliac. And you see that wire got prolapsed, and I just pushed it, got lucky, it went uh, straight into the order. And after that, just uh, you know, usual. Uh, balloons and uh, stents. And that's uh, the result. So, so again, it's all about access, it's all about support catheters, it's all about uh, finding the right equipment and proper wires. Um, and I think that would uh, help you to be successful treating this uh, procedures. Thank you.